Get your St. Louis MMA fix at knuckledogies.com. This video is sponsored by Brad Carey with Realty Executives Premier. If you're looking to buy or sell your home, call Brad Carey. Need a lawyer who fights as hard as you? Call John Meehan, attorney at law. We're here with uh, 2013 St. Louis MMA Pro Fighter of the Year, Josh Sampo. Uh, Josh is, uh, came back, has, has a busy uh, 2014 that uh, we can kind of talk a little bit about. Obviously, uh, what, three fights in the UFC in 2014 or two? Or just... uh, well, th- well, three. Well, one was in uh, last Thanksgiving. Okay. So, I mean, I don't know if that one qualifies for that, that year. But, yeah, about, I've had three in the past, past year. Right. And you know, a trip to Ireland, uh, a couple losses. I mean, uh, you know, no, no hiding behind that. Uh, just kind of, you know, looking back on the year, uh, some lessons learned. And uh, what, 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 is, uh, what have you picked up? Definitely, um, we had a uh, had a lot of uh, tough fights. Like, uh, fought J- Zach Makovsky in February. Very really tough guy. But uh, we realized from that fight that we have to make fighting our soul. Um, our sole venue right now. Like I was teaching full time, coaching full time, and then trying to be a, a professional fighter, and it was just our plate was too full. So, and that cost us a fight. It wasn't that I wasn't in shape, I wasn't prepared to fight. Everything was going like everything we wanted, but I was just my timing was off, probably about a second or two. So, I mean, and that really cost you in a three round fight. And then, um, so we, we battled back from that, um, waited until the year was over, took another fight in July, I believe it was, went to Ireland. I did not realize how much that flight was going to take out of me. We got to, we got to Ireland. I unfortunately got hurt the day before I left, but I've dealt with injuries and I didn't realize the extent of that one, but I kind of masked it anyways, went and fought. Um, we got When we landed in Ireland, I was 20 pounds over, so the weight cut was a little more than I expected, um, plus the jet lag and all that stuff. But we, we, we worked through a lot of adversity there. A lot of personal stuff went down, but we took care of that, went in there and you know we threw down as hard as we could. Um, that's a great thing about fighting. One punch can completely change the outcome. <clears throat> got clipped, um, thought I, was going to finish the guy had him in a deep deep arm lock and in transition got caught you know but like i said that's the beauty of the sport you know that's the nature of the beast anything can change on a moment's notice so uh we were fortunate enough to be able to experience ireland which is really cool so we got a little bit of uh culture shock out of that just realized how much different the world is outside of the u.s so it was uh, it was a blessing blessing to go there and uh i mean you know, I knew you were you know, confident kind of going into that fight. I mean, just kind of what surprised you about it, the fight in Ireland? Uh, dude, the crowd was crazy. The crowd was crazy. I mean, but the, I, I like to flourish off that. I like being the bad guy in somebody's backyard. But it, it wasn't, you know, I was confident in my abilities. Literally, he just snuck a, yeah. snuck a punch at the right time. And I, I, it clipped me, you know, things like that. Just you can't really prepare for everything. You know what I mean? You have to be prepared to battle out of certain situations. But, I mean, it just it was perfect timing for him. Not so good perfect timing for me. One thing I noticed too, I mean, while you're over there, I mean, the, the media attention was was uh, seemed seemed pretty intense, more so than just maybe another uh, fight in Las Vegas. Is like you know, you had your own scrum and you know, with those several uh, reporters there and stuff, for, and you know, just considering your your placement on the bout and all that. Yeah, I mean, being the very first fight, and even on the whole fight card was on Fight Pass, so it wasn't like it was, there was a lot of media attention in that general uh, general area. And we went to a museum to do all the media stuff. It was really cool. Yeah, and they asked me a lot of general questions, what it's going to be like, and I was like, man, this I flourish in this environment. Um, what do you think about your opponent? Just some basic questions, and so I tried to answer pretty good. But then they started like bombarding me with Ian McCall questions, and and um, I mean, so I just just answered it truthfully, and you know, so we took the fight as it went. So. And uh, you kind of recently got back. Uh, if anybody follows you on uh, Twitter or Instagram or whatever, or whatever that uh, kind of knows, you kind of did a little road trip, maybe uh, late summer, early fall. Uh, what can you kind of talk about that? Yeah, now that I'm a, just a full-time fighter, I'm not teaching anymore. I have a lot, lot more time on my uh, in, in my backpack now. So I, uh, I took a big, like a three-month long trip. Went to Vegas, spent some time with my parents, trained with some uh, some buddies there. I helped a guy get ready for a fight out of Vegas, and then uh, spent five weeks at Alpha Male in Sacramento. Um, just so much, it made me realize my holes in my game, which is exactly what I needed, what I need to work on, what I have to fix, you know I mean, competing with some of those top guys, what they do different, things that really, it took a lot away from, I took a lot of notes, yeah. a lot of notes, a lot of mental notes, met a lot of really cool people, you know, sparked a lot of good relationships, signed with a new management company, and uh, <laughs> it's funny, by the end of my trip, I was down training with Ian McCall, so we went from being like, rival enemies to like being like training partners so it was it was a blessing to be able to just experience that whole atmosphere train for a couple hours go hang out on the beach stuff like that i mean it was uh definitely worth it and then i come back and it's just lovely weather here so what was that uh, encounter with uh, with the i mean it was just just a nice thing you guys uh kind of touch or you know say what's up and get going right well uh we had the same manager now that's kind of how i got that connection when i signed with this new management company it ended up being his manager too we had a nice good conversation about it i even talked to when i was in ireland we both fought on the ireland card together and we actually kind of had a few 
few conversations there. Very, very um, genuine individual. And so the, we got to talking about, like, even the, the, the Twitter beef that we had, and he loves that kind of stuff. He likes to hype up a fight. We weren't disrespectful by any means, and he liked that, but it's like we're trying to find a way to bring in the outside, the outside world that doesn't know a lot about fighting. So if they can find that little niche, then that's something that we can grow on, as far, especially because flyweights get pushed, pushed to the back burner so much. That's kind of the knock on the division anyway, is, is you know, people getting attention, so I mean, like you guys kind of... Ex exactly. So, I mean, we were trying to bring a little bit to that, and he loves it because nobody in the division is doing that. Nobody by any means. So he's just, even our champ, I mean, he's a great fighter and a great person, but it's like his personality doesn't boast well for outside people. You know, he's a he's a very big family man. He comes in, he throws down, he goes home to his wife. That's pretty much how he lives, and it's and I commend that. That's an awesome thing. I mean, that's something I wish I had, but I don't. So, I mean, you got to got to find a, find something that's going to bring the outside person to want to watch. So I mean that whole experience uh, in California. I mean uh, both uh, physical notes, mental notes, uh, networking. I would think that, I would think the whole thing kind of went on, right? Oh, dude. When I was, so when I started in Alpha Male, my last week they had me teaching wrestling class, stuff like that, which was a blessing. Um, Joseph Benavides didn't want me to leave. He's like, "Hey, man, you can't go." So I mean, I sparred some really, really good um, relationships with those guys. They're awesome people. They're all wrestlers, so that wrestling connection really helped out. Lance Palmer, Chad Mendes, all those guys were really, really cool. Um, even got a role with Faber himself. So I mean, it was it was such a blessing. Um, um, just but the fact that you see all these high level guys that are like the top of their weight classes and they're just doing like the little things the little classes you know stuff that you think that oh why would they do that you know they're pros they probably got their own thing no man they're in there mixing up with just the average like amateur kid you know and like they're really really helpful they're very very genuine people um it was yeah it was a very very big eye-opening experience well, man you know i, I don't want to break it to you but uh you know here we're doing our nomination show and you know you didn't make you know 2014 of the year but you know, you know maybe 2015 I know you got a big jiu-jitsu match and hopefully a lot more fights yeah man uh, I was uh, honored enough to be you guys 2013 pro fighter of the year 2014 just wasn't my year you know that's the great thing about fighting that uh, there's always gonna be another fight though you know so it's um, uh, props to the guys who did get nominated you know they put they put their work in you know and um, fought their butts off so that's awesome I know that I'm always gonna be right in the mix though especially later on down the down the road I don't know if you guys curse me giving me this this honor it might be the Madden curse but uh, uh definitely I will be back uh, but yeah I do have a grappling match coming up uh, respect one I believe it is um, JW Wright's putting it on it's uh, the end of no February so I'm getting prepared for that I'm uh, grappling against a pretty tough brown belt from 10th planet so as long as I stay healthy then we'll, we'll be uh, hopefully choking taking somebody's neck home. Is that kind of, I mean, uh, Meta Morris has kind of started a, a little interest in that and you, and you see like, like a guy like Rory competing in that. And so, I mean, uh, just, just kind of a, a nice little alternative for you. The thing is, is when I was in California also training, um, I did Nogi Worlds as well. And that really opened up my eyes. Like if I would have really legitimately just trained for Nogi Worlds, I would have done a lot better. I lost to the guy who took second in my second match. Um, had him in multiple dangerous positions. So it really made me um, realized where I was in my jiu-jitsu and I was like wow if I would have trained for this I mean I'm right there with these top level guys that do nothing but jiu-jitsu and I'm a fighter so I mean it's good to also test myself in different areas of the fight game and then to try and bring it together when I do have a fight so this is just another opportunity to be able to sharpen my skills like hey this guy just does something completely different I might have an opponent later on down the road that competes like this if I've seen this in just a grapp grassing, grappling aspect then I'm gonna be able to adjust to that in a fight. Man, thanks so much.